Brothers and sisters, it's wonderful to be with you in this special roundtable setting. Since last April conference, the 70s throughout the world have been taking the training which we've received to the councils of the church, to the leaders, and ultimately to all of the members. We've learned from a very recent research survey those efforts have been successful with all bishops reporting that they have received and taught the training. And many of the members contacted responded that they also had received the training. However, as we have learned at this very conference training, we still have much work to do. Questions have arisen from the field through the priesthood line of leaders and have been compiled and brought together by the presidency of the 70, and I have been asked to share those with you today. Here's the first question. How can families across the world make the Sabbath more of a delight? And I, I would just like to reemphasize uh, from earlier training that we, we really are going to have to be careful uh, not to regiment or to uh, have uh, specific things that we're asking the members of the church to do, that it'll be in the family and the children participating that most of this will uh, come forward. In my own personal home, uh, we found that there were uh, three things that w could be traditions that we would do each time. There are a lot of other things, but uh, one of them was to have a very simple meal that we all participated in making. And then uh, it, that was very simple enough that we could enjoy that uh, event. And then to have a discussion about what had happened at church and, and at least try and bring out a few spiritual things, but also some humorous things that uh, were, uh, were interesting. And the final one in our home was uh, to have a period at some point where we sang together and that singing uh, didn't have to be church hymns or, or uh, uh, children's songs, but some of them, yes. And, uh, and it was, those were some... Uh, traditions that in addition to a lot of other things along the way, were fairly consistent in having a, uh, a very uh, wonderful uh, Sabbath day in the home. Thank you, Elder Cook. Others? I personally find the concept of refreshment or renewal very important to the Sabbath being a delight. Uh, we've all had the experience of working in the hot sun, becoming very hot, uh, to be able to have a cool drink brings a refreshment and a renewal that is very necessary. I view the Sabbath that same way. So given that principle, things that we can do, having fun in the home on the Sabbath in an appropriate way, just spending time together, given the hectic pace of our lives all the other days of the week, can be very refreshing and renewing. That to me is a delight. Thank you. I was just going to chime in. In preparation for this meeting, I was had the privilege of sitting in Elder Cook's office as we were talking about what we might do for this session. And he called his wife on the phone and had her sing a little song that they sang in their home on Sunday about the scripture songs. And had, it was delightful just seeing his face light up, remembering that with his wife. I thought the Sabbath was a delight and, and that's how it ought to be with all of us. Did Elder Cook sing? No. I tried to convince <laughs> I, him. <laughs> I'm, a good, I'm a good audience. <laughs> One thing our family did, um, I love this idea of having family traditions on the Sabbath. Um, and one thing that our family always did, we lived in areas of the church that uh, were not real large or strong. Um, we always invited people over for Sunday dinner who newlyweds that, that had just moved to the area or new converts that didn't have anyone else who maybe needed to see what an LDS family looked like. And those are such great memories to me growing up. And those Sabbath days were a delight. I'll build on that and say the favorite part of Sunday afternoon is when my family or friends walk in the back door and we can sit down together. It's, it does not happen any other day of the week very often. And so we really love that on the Sabbath. One thing that came out of the study that Elder Rasban mentioned was that not a lot of service outside the church or church meetings happens in the lives of members probably about a quarter are typically often engaged in some sort of service on the Sabbath day to other people. I think that can be uh, key to the spirit we feel and the, and the 
purpose of the Sabbath being realized in the lives of families, especially those with children. But at the same time, we don't want to regiment that. We've talked about not having lists of do's and don'ts and all the rest. To me, the key to that is focus on outcomes. What do we want to have happen? What sign do we want to give? And when we've got that kind of a focus, then naturally there comes into play activities of service and other kinds of things that achieve those ends. And we don't have to have lists and do's and don'ts. Wasn't the Savior a good example of what uh, we would do on the Sabbath day? He got criticized, as we know in the scriptures, uh, for the, some of the things he was doing, all of which was good. Healing the sick, teaching, uh, visiting, doing the things that, uh, that he would do. If we keep him in the back of our mind on the Sabbath day, I think it's going to become pretty simple for all of us, regardless of where we live, whether we uh, live in the U.S. or whether we live in the United States or we live in, out into the, uh, in the developing world uh, where the gospel is now prospering so much. We just do those things that he would do keeping that in the back of our minds. I love that. Can I add one more thing? Please. I was just thinking as Elder Christofferson talked about service and Elder Ballard built on that with doing what the Savior would do, I remember the Sabbath day in our home really becoming a delight with some three of our teenage daughters when they fi it finally clicked that this would be a good day to think about what somebody else needed. And so they started a tradition of cookie night. They would make cookies after all our Sunday meetings, and then they would think about who needed a little lift, and they would go deliver those every Sunday night. And it became a delight in a different way than we'd had before. I'd like to pay tribute to my wife and a great lesson that she taught me. Uh, we lived uh, in areas where our service required significant travel and a great deal of time. There are many auxiliary and priesthood leaders who are away from the home on the Sabbath serving. But when I would arrive at home, there would be something very simple to eat, and Susan always had prepared the children so that we would sit down and talk about, so what did you do today, and what have you learned? Now, there are many things that priesthood and auxiliary leaders cannot talk about in terms of names and cases, but the things that we learn ought to be shared with the people that we love the most. And this evolved into this wonderful pattern and tradition of, Whenever dad would get home from wherever in the world he had been traveling that day, we would sit down and these little boys would ask, so dad, where were you and what'd you, what'd you learn today? Those are some of the most meaningful family conversations I think we ever had. And it was all the function of Susan setting the stage and helping to make that happen.